In collaboration with BrainMind, let's review all the tips and tricks about vascular brain health. Many people think that changes in blood pressure, cholesterol, diabetes, and other vascular risk factors can cause Alzheimer's disease. Well, actually, vascular risk factors can cause cognitive changes independently, meaning changes in blood pressure, high pressure, for example, changes in blood sugar with diabetes, high sugars, high cholesterol, and other aspects can actually present with cognitive changes specifically due to those vascular risks. The other important point about vascular risk factors and vascular brain health is that vascular risk factors fast forward Alzheimer's pathology and can fast forward Alzheimer's disease dementia. So the complexity here is that vascular changes don't necessarily cause Alzheimer's disease, but they can be independently or in collaboration with Alzheimer's pathology cause cognitive decline. Let's talk about this in detail because it's a major, major contributor to brain health factors. So when it comes to vascular brain health, if we can optimize blood pressure, optimize blood sugar control, and optimize cholesterol, that gives us our best bet for positive brain health over time. What do I mean by optimize? There's normal and abnormal values throughout medicine. However, when it comes to preventative medicine, when it comes to thinking about concepts of longevity, when it comes to thinking about concepts of health span, remember, it's not just about living longer, it's about living better. And there's no better way to live than with a healthy brain. Well, the best way to do that in some circumstances is to optimize one's risk factors. Blood pressure that is normal or borderline doesn't necessarily mean it's optimal. As an example, there's a research study called the Sprint Mind Study. The Sprint Mind Study looked at three years of more comprehensive or aggressive, tighter control of blood pressure. When a person's blood pressure was allowed to be at, say, the 140s over 80s, as compared to the 120s over 70s, just tighter control of blood pressure for three years reduce the likelihood of that person developing the early signs of Alzheimer's dementia by close to 20%. Let's pause for a second. Can you imagine that just by tighter control of blood pressure, we can reduce the potential cases of Alzheimer's disease dementia by close to 20%? That's striking. The impact on public health, the impact on health span, and even the impact on lifespan across the globe would be tremendous. But unfortunately, most physicians are a little bit too focused on a normal range. But a normal range includes 95% of the population. 95% of the population within a normal range. But we know that people at the higher end are not so normal. Borderline values in blood pressure, borderline values in cholesterol, and borderline values in blood sugar can create vascular brain changes, cognitive changes that can affect a person's quality of life and can also, again, fast forward the person's risk of Alzheimer's disease. Let's talk now about cholesterol. Cholesterol is a very complicated topic and most physicians check the good versus the bad cholesterol. The good cholesterol is called the HDL, which may be protective. The LDL is the bad cholesterol, which again, may have a negative effect on processing speed, executive or higher order function, as well as other aspects of cognition. So when we try to understand the good versus bad cholesterol, can we be better than just good? For example, some doctors think that the bad cholesterol and LDL of 100 is normal. Well, when I went to medical school, back then I think it was 160 was normal. Then it was 130. Then it was 100. But now when we look at the data, in the United States, if we can get people, based on studies, below 70, an LDL cholesterol of 70, that's when we can have the most protective effects. However, if you look at the data even more deeply, especially with studies in Europe, a target LDL cholesterol, especially in someone that has multiple family members with early heart attacks or early strokes or early vascular changes, 
If you can get that LDL down even more so to less than 50, that's when we can have the most benefits. So again, the concept of normal versus optimal and this wide range of normal is something we have to think very closely about when it comes to vascular brain health. And finally, let's talk about blood sugar. Just having diabetes alone, just diabetes alone, can double the likelihood of developing Alzheimer's disease and related cognitive decline. So what can we do to assess a person's blood sugar risk? Well, we look at three factors, a fasting blood sugar or a fasting glucose level, a fasting insulin level. Insulin is the hormone that the body secretes when someone eats carbohydrates to help break it down. And then we can also look at something called a hemoglobin A1C or HbA1C, glycosylated hemoglobin. When we look at all these factors, among others, we can truly understand a person's likelihood of developing Alzheimer's in the near future because the person may be on the road to diabetes, which again doubles that person's risk. When we look at blood sugar levels, what is normal? When I was in medical school, 125 fasting blood sugar was considered normal. But then as the science expanded and my training continued, that then changed to 116. Well, now it's 100. But wait, let's look at cognitive measures. When the studies have actually looked at what is the minimal amount of fasting blood sugar that a person should target in order to prevent or really minimize their risk of vascular brain changes, that target is even closer to a fasting blood sugar of 95. So what I'm trying to summarize here are the most common vascular brain health conditions and the wide range of supposed normal. It's important to talk to your physician about all these different wide ranging aspects of normal versus optimal because preventative health is really keyed in on optimization rather than being complacent with borderline or normal. Further, it's really important for someone to take control of their own brain health and know their numbers. Anyone at risk for Alzheimer's disease, dementia, anyone with a family member that has had brain changes over time as they've aged should know their numbers, should know their cholesterol levels, the good and the bad, should know their blood pressure levels, the top number systolic and bottom number diastolic, and should absolutely also know their blood sugar level when a person has been fasting overnight. We take all this information together and combine it with the variety of other risk factors. And that's how we can optimize and protect vascular brain health over time. And that's also how we can slam on the brakes rather than fast forward Alzheimer's pathology.